Hey, how's it going? Don't worry, the title of this video is not clickbait. And I typically don't ask much, but please watch the entirety of this intro for a better understanding of what I'm about to explain to you about this plugin. I truly believe this plugin is one of a kind and can do so much for your server. It's free and well-made, and the amount of features currently, I'm surprised it's not the next essentials, but I can understand why it's not. I will not be covering every tiny detail of typewriter, which is the name of the plugin, but I will explain the following, how to create actions, cinematics, roads, entities in your world, and and also use the web panel. With that being said, need a way to monitor your player's CPU, memory, and more with ease, and a clean, user-friendly control panel? Revive Node has you covered. Filter console errors effortlessly, and install plugins or mods and different Minecraft versions with just a click. And wait, there's more. Use the promo code DIAMOND in all caps at the checkout for 15% off your first purchase. Experience premium servers at a pocket-friendly price. Check it out today at revivenode.com. Of course, all this is being hosted on Revive Node, even the web panel, but there's only one command that you really do need to know from this plugin, and that is typewriter connect. There are other commands, of course, but I'm going to be showing primarily through the web panel and what you need to learn. I'm going to be separating this in two sections, the road network and part two, which is going to be the cinematic. There is going to be small bits and bops of smaller features that you can learn throughout the plugin in each section. This is so you can easily go to a section that you want, and I can explain it all throughout there. I'm currently using version 0.6 beta, so please be aware as 0.7 may be coming out in the future and more updates as well. If you guys do enjoy this video, of course, make sure to leave a like. I guess let's get started. Road networks is really interesting because you can not only add it so players can know where to go in certain objectives or quests, but you can also add it for NPC pathfinding so they could roam around your world or anything that you really can put your little heart desire into. Like if you can think about it, you could probably do within this plugin, but let's actually create one. For that, I'm actually gonna go into the editor. In here, we're gonna add a page and this is gonna be a static page for someone that doesn't really, we can't add other values into other than changing its own value. So we're gonna go ahead and add it. And then here I'm gonna go do road and I'll scroll down we can see add base road network and we can just name it what we want for this one I'm going to call it tutorial area as this is going to be like more of a tutorial area. you can name everything to be better organized and I'm going to go ahead and just publish that after which I'm going to just double click this and what that will do is give me all these items in game now we can add nodes all over the map let's say my player spawns down here I can add a location here and if I shift twice it'll put me back into the main menu but if I add another node you'll see that other menu that popped up so if I add one here you can see that we have all these settings what I'm holding right now is selecting the radius of the node. So just by scrolling, I can increase it or decrease it. This can come in use, especially for tight corners. But if you right click it, it'll switch it off and you can see the other things such as add fast travel connection, remove edge, previous editor and remove the node. So if I just do that, so if I wanted to remove the node, just click it. All I need to do is click it and then right click and the redstone block and it's removed. But I can just add another node up here. I'm gonna double shift and then we can add more nodes all the way up to where we need it. I'm not gonna go too crazy, but I do wanna show how integrated this network is and how they communicate with one another because it is very interesting in my opinion. So I'm just going to add a couple here and there and I'm going to add one over here as well where my objective is going to be. I'm not going to add it on the objective. I'm going to add it near the objective. So with that, you can see here we have all the worlds connecting. You can see them literally talking to each other like, oh, I'm available. You can connect to me. You're available. Everything like it is amazing what the developer did here and it can communicate all the way back to where we started. The best part is you only need one around a objective. So if you have an objective for like a mission complete, like around here, for example, you don't need the node on the mission. It can still look for certain objectives about 30 blocks away. But with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and exit the editor. And now we're going to add an objective. So we're going to go back into the editor. And here I'm going to go ahead and create a new manifest. We're just going to name this uh, go to location just to keep it organized. And with that, I'm going to just add a entry. And then here we're going to do location. I'm going to add a path stream location. This is going to allow it. So I'm just going to name it visual so you guys can better understand. It's going to allow us to see the path stream, well, how to get to that location. Next thing we're going to do is connect it to the roadmap. So that one is tutorial area. We're connected to it now, so it knows which one to do. And the best part, one thing I will say the developer has informed me of, if you ever have a large area and it's all connected to one road network for the entire area, this plugin is very well optimized that it knows how to handle it perfectly without lag. So you don't need to do separate areas, just do one large area. Now what we need to do is add an objective location. So for that, we're gonna do objective, objective location. Now Next thing we're going to do is add a quest. So now we have a objective location and a quest for, for that objective location. So let's say I have an NPC here. Let's go ahead and just grab an armor stand so it's we can recognize a little better. 
and we can just stand right where it's at. And then in here, I'm gonna click on new objective location. I'm gonna call it NPC so we know what it is. And I will click the blue icon again, and that will save my current coordinates. And then I'll grab the NPC one and I'll hold it and I'll put it right under the quest. Now we have both things set up. This is a quest and then this is telling me to go to the NPC. Next thing we'll do is add item. We'll, net, we'll do hold, add holding item fact. And I'm going to call this one diamond item hold. So I know that I'm holding a diamond item. With that being said, I'm going to go into my inventory. I'll hold the item. We can even do custom items if we need to. But for this one, I'm just going to do a simple diamond. I'm going to double click that. It's going to recognize the item I'm holding and keep its information right there. I'm going to go back to our manifest, which is to go to location. And here I'll add the criteria. So add a criteria and I will add it for hold item, which is the diamond item. And then I will set this to one. I'll add a completed criteria, which is the item again. And I'll set this to zero. And with that, I'll publish it and go into the game. Now, before we actually do that, there was a mistake on my end. We do not need to link these two. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold it and drag it back out as I'm actually going to go into here on an NPC and select it via the quest and set. So it's telling me that this is the NPC to go. I want this to reference the quest. And really, that's all I had to do. I just provided the incorrect information there and I just wanted to ensure that that was correct before continuing. But if we do go in game now and if I hold a diamond, as you can see right there, it will recognize that that's my location. And this will work, of course, from 30 blocks away from any available node. So if I'm over here, it's not gonna work because there's no node close enough. But if I get closer to a node, it's informing me that I can go towards this direction to reach, well, I guess my objective here, which is simply the NPC. And the first time I saw this, it was amazing. So all the way down here, it will, it will give us information of, hey, you need to go all the way up there. You have an objective. We could also do this in other methods as well, if they're doing a quest or anything like that. But I just wanted to show you that you can do with the holding of an item. And a quick explanation of what exactly is happening here. On the quest, the criteria is just checking. So on both of them, is holding item value of one means true and is holding value, value zero, false. And that's informing if I'm holding the item, start the objective. If I'm not holding the item, stop the objective. Simple as that. This section of the video may be a little bit more confusing and a bit more everywhere, but hey, it's just primarily to show what can be done with the plugin at the end of the day. I wanna start it off with having this block being interactable, and then it will put you into a cinematic view with a player going down with my skin. Uh, maybe he's on fire, maybe he's glowing. We could add variables like that. Then some text on the screen, and that's really it. So we can do all that. What we have to do, first of is actually go on the website and here we're going to just add a page i'm just gonna call this is gonna be just a sequence page i'm gonna call this one movie because this is where we're gonna start everything and then i'll add a entry i'm gonna do cinematic so add a cinematic and then in here as well i'm gonna do interact add interact with block and then we have these two elements i'm going to select a block so i can do a diamond block here we can specify the location if we want to but i'm just gonna go ahead and also just hold the new cinematic and drag it into the interact. So when we interact with the block, it's going to start the cinematic. Going to the cinematic, we can give it a name. So I'll just call it Walk Movie, because just so we can know. And I'm gonna rename this to Diamond Block Interact. It doesn't need to be named like this. It's just more for organization purposes. Now in here, we can go ahead and add a cinematic page. So we can just click that, and then we can name it uh, Walking. Let's go ahead and click Add. In here, we can add a entry. So we can do camera and then this is going to be our camera we can also add a entity so for that we're going to do add entity cinematic artifact and then we need to add it to a page we're going to go ahead and add it to our current existing page which is a static page we can name it so we're just going to rename it to player walking good enough we're going to go back into our cinematic artifact and in here we can now properly add cinematic and then we're going to add this one there is a key difference here and i had to get help for that one Thanks, Gabba. And then we're going to now just assign it a new NPC self-definition. So here we're gonna, so we got the essential things we need. We can start off with the camera. We're gonna add a segment. That's essentially the timeline and we can decrease or increase it, add more duration up here and how long we want the whole cinematic to be. And with that, I can now, if I click on this segment, we can see the path and I can add a path and we can expand that. We can easily just, put how we want the how we want it to look so I can just add an angle like this going to the panel again and I can double click 
on the camera and then it's going to save my coordinates and everything. Here we can set up duration. From one thing I've learned is you do not need to set a duration for the last path. So if you have multiple cameras, you can set up a whole cinematic where roams but i'm just going to show a quick and easy angle but like i said you do not need to set one for the last because it will just calculate it overall but the next thing we're going to do is go into the cinematic and here we're going to add a segment as well and then in here i'm going to define what we're going to do is add a npc definition so we do have a manifest to go to location but this one's going to be different so i'm just going to call it movie i'll click add that and then in here we have our npc definition with that we can add a skin i'm going to go ahead and click fetch from uid and for that i'm just going to grab my own uid and click fetch that will grab my skin and you can see that right here we can also add a display name so i can just name i can have a diamond instead of diamond xr and we can even add more data if we so need to for example i can add glowing effect and it will be defined to the npc definition within our manifest and then we can just set true and then that's just one of the things we can add but here's the most important part we're going to go back into our into our timeline we're going to go ahead and click on our entity cinematic and i'm going to click on the segment itself and now that we have all that we can select what we want so we want player moving this is from our static page and now for in game we can just double click this and we're going to get all these items in our inventory this is going to allow us to record you can even see where the camera is so even if it's animated and you have a timeline with the camera moving you're going to be able to see that as well but one really cool thing is i can start recording and just like that it's going to show it on the top of my game with the boss bar and i can even play it to see how it's going to act up I can skip a frame, I can go back if I need to, all in real time here, and I can even exit the editor. With that being said, let's go back into here. And now we have that, we can even rename some stuff if we want to. So we can just name this one the player. And here is our first camera. Now we're gonna go back into our sequence. And here we have where we created the on block interact and then start the movie. I'm gonna go ahead and add another one. So I'm gonna type in here message and then we can just do a add a simple message to player. I'm going to just type in the message. This is a cool message and I'll just drag it as well into here. After that, we're gonna go ahead and click on publish. Now, if we go in game, if I right click the diamond block, we should see the cinematic and we even get, this is a cool message underneath. After a little short period, when our cinematic time is over, it'll just teleport us back, but we can also add more variables to what we wanted to do. And we can even add more entities as well, if we so wanted to. Hey, that's the video right there. Hope you guys have enjoyed. If you guys have, make sure you leave a like on the video. It really does help the channel. Other than that, here's a video that YouTube thinks you're going to like. Maybe. Who knows? But I'm Diamond. I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.